Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus. Thank you for joining us for Soul Talk Sunday. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So come join us and check out what it is we're going to be talking about today. I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. So thank you for joining us for our Soul Talk Sunday. And as I mentioned, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. I thought it'd be the perfect time to kind of talk about the different structures of how shoes and boots are assembled, the different sole structures at least. Um, you know, there's a lot of different variants out there, but the primary ones, of course, are going to be your Goodyear welted, your Blake stitched, and, um, you know, your glued on soles. Those are the primary ones. There's also molded soles. So we'll kind of cover the basis of how these soles are attached to help you identify when you're purchasing a pair of shoes what it is you need to look for what it is you want or what you're after and in general even what you're paying for some shoes can get very 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 pricey i mean in the thousands you know so you know today we'll kind of help cover that now of course we're going to start out with what's called Goodyear welted shoes and boots. These are kind of the most prized build constructions. They've got bespoke made shoes which are custom made shoes actually. That's the proper terminology for it. And a lot of the other high end shoes out there. Now what is Goodyear welted? Goodyear welted shoes basically means that the sole is stitched on to a welt. Now I've got a pair of western boots up here that we're still working on. So this is the welt right here and the welt is stitched to the upper as well as the liner and a lot of the other interiors here it's stitched to that and in this one you can tell there's holes here from the previous sole that we had taken off we're doing what's called a half sole on it and you know at that point basically the way that the shoe is assembled once the welt is on the sole is glued on and then it's stitched around you know, that way you can resole it time and time again, and eventually once that welt does wear out, it can be replaced with a Goodyear welt or what's called hand welting, where it's hand stitched on there. So there's a few different terminologies in the welt category alone. Now, with a Goodyear welt, again, you can resole time and time again, mainly because that welt, the welt is going to hold up for quite some time. The other, uh, I'll also option to it is because it's good you're welted you have a much larger variety of different sole options that you can do you can do uh, rubber you can do leather you can do a combination as well you can do different shapes of rubber soles as well and just you know you could do a lot of things off of a good year welted shoe construction basically and it just depends on what what it is you're after pretty much with a Goodyear welt of course within that category alone there's a few different techniques of stitching as well um, now when you're shopping for a pair of shoes obviously if you want to find out what kind of uh, uh, what kind of way they secure these soles to the shoe or boot ask the person that you're working with or contact the the company that you're trying to purchase a lot of them will promote and advertise that they do just good your welted or they'll even post it on their sites or in their catalogs that it's good your welted but to identify at least you know you have to look at the shoe here to see if there's stitching up top here and that it lines up with the bottom stitching right here that will indicate most likely that it's good you're welted another way is also if you take a pair of shoes and kind of pull it back just a little bit here, you may sometimes in that really narrow crack right down there, you may be able to see a stitch or two every now and then. And that's just another way to be able to identify. Now again, questioning and asking about it. Majority of the time, if the salesperson is very knowledgeable, they're gonna tell you, yes, these are Goodyear welted, these are Blake stitched, these are such and such. Um, now with the Goodyear welt, that is the traditional proper way of building a shoe of course so again it's one of those things that you see more often on higher quality footwear all well I wouldn't say all but almost all western boots have it a lot of work boots have it a lot of dress shoes and boots have it as well uh, ladies shoes it, there's fewer of course out there that are Goodyear welted but there are still a few out there men's dress shoes of course there's a huge variety we've got a couple of them here we've got two pairs of Allen Edmonds got a pair of Justin Fitzpatrick's um, so just to give you an idea now even like I said within that category of Goodyear welted shoes and boots there's a few different ways that they do it 
Now, as far as those cat uh, different uh, techniques and those categories, it's really something you see from the bottom. Now, the most common one that you see on dress shoes mostly would be your open channel, where the channel is very wide here and you can really see the stitches nicely inside. And um, that's just the more traditional way that everybody really does it as far as all the factories out in Edmund does it, Alden does it, um, even John Lobb and Edward Green when you get into the $1,000 price point. They tend to do it a lot of times with that open channel like that. Now, another method is, which is kind of that next step up, I would say, Say, would have to be your closed channel which is the proper terminology for it but there's a lot of questions about it amongst a lot of avid shoe enthusiasts and lovers out there now a closed channel like this here is actually just a cut channel so while it's being stitched the machine automatically cuts out and slices a piece of material well not out but it just splits it open so the stitch will sit inside of it. it's much narrower than the open channel where with the open channel the sole is pre-grooved so you run it through a groover it opens up the channel and then you stitch it afterwards where with the closed channel that blade ends up just cutting as thin of a possible uh, section out. It doesn't cut out any of the material. The stitch goes down in there afterwards. This all gets pressed down either with a machine or hammering or however. There are a lot of different methods of closing off that channel and making it nice and tight. And so that's one of those very questionable things when everyone thinks that a closed channel, they think it's something else, which we're about to be talking about here in a second next. But, um, you know, the, ne the next option, of course, is your closed channel, which this one isn't exactly the best option to show you. The better option, of course, to show you would be this one here, where we did just an experimental pair. This one's been beaten up with events and everything like that. But the next one up from the closed channel is going to be your blind or invisible stitch. Now, as you can tell, this side here is stitched with an open channel, so it's nice and wide. But with a invisible or blind stitch, you don't see it. It's covered up. Basically, the leather gets spliced open, folded uh, to the side a little bit, stitched down, and then the leather's folded back over and adhered so that it protects the stitches for a longer period of time. It almost looks like it's never even been stitched. But that's what a blind or invisible stitch is like. I have a pair of Justin Fitzpatrick's here that are a little bit more... Well, I guess you can't see it on this one. I thought I saw it maybe on the other one. Ah, there we go. You can possibly see it there on the toe, just a little bit of the stitching. But with Justin Fitzpatrick, it's almost standard on a lot of their models where it's a blind stitch like that. So you don't see the stitches there, but it does protect it for a period of time. This gentleman, as you can tell, tends to wear his toes a little bit. So we're down enough where we can actually see at least some of the stitching already starting to show through. So that's uh, those are your kind of more common more popular types of stitches that you'll see and you know not all companies will do the blind stitch and not all companies will do the invisible or sorry closed channel stitch like western boots western boots almost all of them have that closed channel like that but there are a handful out there that have an open channel stitch i have not come across any that actually have a true blind stitch uh, on a western boot so if you're needing your boots resold and you want to be one of the very few or potentially even the only one out there with a western boot with a blind stitch let us know it's a cool thing it does usually come in at a little bit of an extra cost to do the blind stitch of course because the process alone has to be split very carefully with the razor and it takes quite a bit of time uh, open channel is a lot easier to do and even a closed channel if you're experienced is a bit of a easier step to do now for some cobblers of course and even manufacturers it's it's a challenge lining up for the closed channel because you have to line up with the razor blade that s splits it open a little bit as well as the awl that comes in underneath and then the needle that comes down so lining up three different things all at once can be a little bit of a, a challenge for some but there are plenty of cobblers out there that do great work on it and a lot of manufacturers as well and also there is one other one that not too many people talk about it is just a top stitch top stitch is what i mean by when you see with mostly day night and other forms of rubber soles that are stitched there is no channeling whatsoever it just literally sits over top 
A lot of people don't like it. As you can tell, this one's been worn down a little bit here already because the stitches aren't sitting inside of a channel being protected for as long as possible. So it's a bit of a uh, controversial thing. Um, but again, almost all the companies do it when they do a rubber sole just because on a rubber sole, getting everything to line up to do a uh, channel stitch or a uh, closed channel stitch is much, much harder. A rubber sole, of course, it is impossible to, uh, to do a blind stitch just because, again, rubber folds back into its position and it turns out a big mess and uh, even gluing it all back together and putting it all back together, it's gonna come apart after the first or second wear. So if, uh, if you're new to footwear and you're not very familiar with the blind stitch and you come in you want a rubber sole with a blind stitch i'm sorry we're gonna have to refuse it and any cobblers out there especially steve out in virginia beetles leatherworks give him giving him a shout out that guy does some crazy things but i swear if you do that steve if you even attempt that oh my god man i'm gonna fly out there and i don't know <laughs> because that's just gonna be crazy but just want to give that kind of as a notice. Now, with, uh, with day-night soles or other forms of rubber soles also, if we get them in for a resole, we actually do channel the stitches. Uh, we don't, of course, do the blind stitch, but we channel them. We either pre-groove a channel. I'll show you a picture now with that. Kind of like that one right there, where we'll pre-channel it and uh, then stitch through it or the other method of course is doing the blind stitch which is a little bit harder it will protect the stitches a little bit better but it is a little bit harder again to get it to line up because the rubber likes to stretch quite a bit so angling it on the stitcher is is a bit of a challenge it, in its own way all right but that basically covers the um good your welt side of things at least the at least the more important side of everything i'm gonna be putting these guys back up on display we still have yet to work on these ones here so if you want to check that video out we'll have it up later on we're actually going to be putting a day night sole on this one um, may take me a little while to get it posted for you but you know if you're watching this later down the road check out that video it'll be uh justin fitzpatrick boots getting new day night soles so all right, now we'll move on to the next uh, next build style that's uh, fairly popular in a great build. Let me get this all switched out for you real quick. Now, before we really also move on, I did also forget to mention that even within the welts, there's another version of builds as well. Well, not necessarily builds, but styles of weld too. So now we go back up to the uppers. Now you've got your, of course, traditional welts that tend to go all the way around, kind of like this one. So you can see the stitch down in there everywhere and just kind of the same thing all around um, where you know, you've got the upper, goes straight down and turns right into the welt right away, right where the crevice is. But then you've also got your split welts too, like uh, these other Allen Edmonds that I have here that are gonna be worked on. You can see that little edge right there with the lip that kind of sticks up. You can see them on these floor shine imperials also. Yes, these are mine actually. I got them at a great deal. But you can see that little bit of a lip just sticking up a bit. And this is more of a split welt. There's a few other names and terminology to it and I just can't remember. But you can see that it's got a bit of a difference between the two. You got your traditional Goodyear welt here. You got your split welt. So that kind of gives you an idea. But on both of them, you can look down in there and you can really see the stitches on the inside there fairly well on both of those. But there's one, and I, as a cobbler, I dread this one. I can't stand it. This is a pair of Johnson & Murphy's, and they're one of the very few companies that do that. There's a reverse channel welt. So basically, down inside here, you can't see the stitches, but there is a faint line right in there. And that faint line is like as if you do the closed channel stitching, but it's on the opposite side. So the stitches sit down inside there. I can't stand it as a cobbler because we have to pull all the old stitches out and it is a nightmare having to get in there to get the old stitches out and leaving them behind is not a good idea. It's, it's just poor worksman, workmanship on that. 
But the other thing is also that I don't like about it is it actually weakens that welt because you're having to cut into the welt as well as stitching it and it really shortens the life expectancy of that particular welt. And I mean, it, it looks nice, a little bit more clean because you don't see the stitches, but at the same time, life expectancy on that welt is, is shortened significantly. So, you know, if you have a pair of Johnson Murphy's or any of the other brands that may be doing it, if you get to a point where you need your welt replaced, don't request to make it look the same or anything like that. Go with a traditional Goodyear welt or a split welt. There is also one other one, and at the moment, I did not spot any boots or shoes that I have in stock, um, or not in stock, but ones that we're going to be working on for the time being. There's also what's called a Norwegian welt. It's very similar to the split welt, but this little wall here goes up just a tad bit higher, and the welt is stitched on from the outside. So it looks like you got two rows of stitching, but one of them is actually being stitched to the upper here, and then you got the welt, st uh, welt to sole stitching. And that one is considered to be one of the most waterproof type of uh, welt designs. Now these are not, of course, 100% waterproof unless they are Gore-Tex lined or Sympatex where they have some kind of booty liner that's designed to be waterproof. Um, but in a shoe that's not lined in such a way, Goodyear welt is going to be your most water resistant at least design and the Norwegian style welt will be at the very top for your waterproof aspect where water won't get in. Next down will be your split welt like this here. Um, again Steve is somebody that's been been showing off a lot of those uh, split welts like that. He's been loving it I guess. And, uh, and then of course your next one down is your traditional Goodyear welt and then of course uh, this abomination i'm sorry i don't mean to dog johnson murphy you guys have some some decent shoes out there but as a cobbler i just can't stand that uh that welt there but anyways now that we got that out of the way we're gonna move on to our blake stitch soles there isn't too much variance out there or anything like that there is of course two variations to a Blake stitch sole, at least traditionally. Um, you've got a Blake stitch sole, basically, you can see on these uh, Magnani's in here. On the inside, you could possibly see that, sorry, I'll get a little bit closer. You can see that stitch right there started up. So they stitch the entire shoe from the inside to the outside here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great build and everything, but, you know, the, as far as quality goes and everything, when it comes to shoes, Goodyear Welt is always going to be at the top. But Blake Stitch seems to have a little bit more of a slim profile. Now, this one does look like it has a welt on there that's stitched as if it's a Goodyear Welt, but that's actually decorative. That welt, you can do whatever you want with it. You could have uh, plain welt, stitch welt, no welt whatsoever, and just have it have the sole stitched on directly to the boot. And you can make it a low profile sole, you can make it a wider sole, you could do just about whatever when it comes to a Blake Stitch. Now the dilemma with the Blake stitch, because you're having the needle and the thread going completely through the entire upper, uh, the midsole, uh, the artificial welt there that's there for just the look and the sole itself, there is a sh limitation on and shorter life expectancy on how many times these can be resold. Goodyear welt again, you can resold time and time again and eventually you know replace the welt and just continue to resold. Blake stitch because it's going through all that material every single time your upper eventually starts to give out because you are creating new holes we can't see inside the boot um, while we're stitching it because it's upside down like this to see if we're aiming into the same original holes and so new holes are formed the thread starts pulling material wears out and you know at some point you just have to give up on it poor quality made shoes with Blake stitch may last maybe one or two resoles if you're lucky after the original sole but a uh, higher quality like a pair of these magnani's here you're you're definitely going to have a uh, longer life expectancy i'd say maybe closer to about roughly five maybe even six resoles um, before you really have to start considering giving up on them um, there are ways to basically save that upper and reconstruct it in a way and reconstruct the whole boot to potentially accommodate uh, Blake Stitch again. But cost-wise, 
probably 99% of the time it's just not worth it. Uh, same thing here on these that are going to be getting worked on. They've had some half soles done before on them. Um, these are two boot New Yorks. They're also Blake stitched on most of them. You can possibly see down in there. Let's see if I can open this up. Try to try to get you guys to be able to see inside there a little bit better. I don't think these were ones that we did. Yeah, it doesn't look like ours. Too wide of a stitch everywhere. But you can see down in there, there's a white row of stitching there. And again, Blake stitched as well. Again, it's not a bad build. It's very nice because you could get that low profile. Magnani has some really beautiful shoes that are just very slim, low profile look. If you're able to wear that, of course, if you don't have too wide of a foot, um, you know, they're a beautiful shoe. Just life expectancy if you're considering long term of decades and decades potentially getting handed down through generations the blake stitch is not going to be that type of shoe where the goodyear welted i've had pairs come through that have been handed down three four generations and they're still going strong so you know but you could still get a decade or two out of a pair of blake stitch shoes just depends on the sole that you put on you know or what it is you uh, tend to wear them for how often things like that you could have them last for a couple of decades potentially so that gives you an idea on the blake stitch there's not much else that i can tell you about it, it you're almost always going to see the stitch on the bottom there are a few companies out there that will do the blind stitch as well on a blake stitch shoe but <clears throat> It's, it's a very rare thing. I mean, very rare. Otherwise, you know, it's it's almost always an open channel. It's not really a uh, closed channel. This pair here has more of a top stitch design again, also because it's rubber. So the stitch tends to sit on top. Same rules apply as the Goodyear welted ones. Most companies, if they're stitching a rubber, they don't pre-channel it, where a lot of us cobblers, we tend to pre-channel even the rubber ones and, and then stitch it on. And then there are some builds that you just can't pre-channel as well some builds of soles at least you can't pre-channel and then stitch the blake blake stitch style on all right so that kind of covers the basics on the blake stitch there and then of course extends a bit more on the goodyear welt so let's go ahead and move on to the next one now all right so now we come down to at least in the men's category where you come across more of those I don't want to say cheap shoes, but at least more cost efficient styles. In other words, um, they're an avid shoe enthusiast communities and those who understand a quality build. They know that these are kind of on the bottom scale of things um, when it comes to dress shoes and a lot of boots, too, where they're just glued on. Now, these ones here, you can obviously tell there is no stitching on the welt. There is zero stitching on the inside other than the um, footbed that has kind of like a decorative stitching around here. Now these are Johnson Murphy of course and they have a lot of different varieties from Johnson Murphy. You saw the Goodyear welted they have a lot of the Blake stitch and then they've got the ones that are just glued down here on the bottom you can see these were just glued on there was no stitching or anything like that. Um, they still need a little more love and attention but Regardless, still, you can see there's no stitching whatsoever. This is not a blind stitch, it's just glued on. And you can see that kind of decorative welt and everything there. Now, decorative welt, it looks like this here. It's literally just glued on. These little rib, rib pieces or teeth, I guess you can say, they go in underneath, get glued down, and then the sole is glued over top or vice versa. Sometimes this, if you have a precise sole already, this gets glued to the sole and then all put together. Um, so this is what a Blake stitch shoe has when it looks like it has a welt on there. And uh, of course the glued on soles too. And there are a lot of different variants of these welts too because they're decorative. They're not really functional necessarily. For us cobblers, they're a little functional just because it works great as a guide when it comes to replacing the sole and following that guide to trim everything out. Now there's this one also here. This is a pair of Bostonians. Um, you can see that there's a faint, well, a little hard to see, but there's a stitch down in there. You know, looks like it's stitched, but when you flip it over, there's nothing there. Even on the worn out areas, you don't even see a sign of stitching. Again, these were just glued on here as well. They were not uh, stitched in any form or way. 
so unfortunately these are considered to be on the bottom because eventually all these areas that get bends or if you're somebody that catches your toe one of those areas are just going to come undone and unglued where a blake stitched or a goodyear welted shoe may eventually come undone once you wear it through the stitches and the welt starts or glue i'm sorry starts giving out uh, from heat exposure or moisture or something like that or even uh, the salt uh, chemicals that they put out if you live in an area where it snows and it gets icy that eventually eats through the glue and then you'll have it come undone but on a um, glued on sole like this that's just cemented on it's going to come undone even if you're not putting it through such rough conditions now on ladies shoes again majority of them are glued on we've got a pair of paul greens here it's a pretty good build and everything all around but it is glued down it looks like somebody tried touching it up with some glue down here already before but it's already coming undone in a few areas you can see the split there and you know with the ladies shoe it's kind of hard to fit a stitch in uh, especially if you're trying to make it nice and low profile and everything so you're kind of left with no option but to adhere it on there are, again are a few variants out there that have a goodyear weld stitch and a blake stitch on ladies shoes but they tend to be more of the flat loafer style that look a little more like the men's shoe there were a few high heels that i've come across over the years but very very few i mean i'm talking like one in almost ten thousand pairs type of thing where they're high heel at least somewhat like this and they're blake stitched or even goodyear welted but they tend to look a little bit beefier in other words not so low profile same rules apply with a pair of these Louboutins here. Very nice made high-end shoe, but regardless, it is glued on. That's the only way you could get that very thin, low-profile sole to stick and hold up as adhesion. Stitches alone will probably end up being just as thick as this sole is, if not thicker in some cases. So it's just not a possibility to do so. But ladies tend to have a larger variety of shoes and they switch them out more frequently than men and um, you know of course men are a little bit heavier and rougher on their footwear and us men when we find a couple of pairs that we like we tend to just alternate between those few pair there's a few guys out there i know that have really large oops really large collection of footwear so they can switch out or often so they don't tend to wear out their shoes as easily or as quickly ladies however you know if you if a lady was wearing this pair of shoes every other day or even every third day or something this sole would wear out extremely fast let alone that it's just adhered on it would, it would wear out fast that's that low profile look to it same thing with these these have a thicker leather sole on them but they would wear out quick and as you can tell this lady loves these shoes she's been wearing them frequently and they need a little love and attention here i don't remember what we were going to be doing altogether for these but they're going to be worked on a little bit later on so that's the adhered style now we're going to move on to our next one now we're going to move on to our last one here i know this video is a little bit long but hopefully it's fairly educational for the last one here now we're over to what we call not only we call but the general public a lot of cobblers and shoe manufacturers call the molded sole style which is what you tend to see on tennis shoe hiking shoes a lot of those uh, more athletic or you know basic type of footwear i guess you can say um, now a molded style there are two different versions of it there is one like this one here where you got a molded sole that's designed to fit this particular boot in this size and width but it's adhered on it's just quite literally glued on these vasks are the same exact way that sole is made by Vibram for them. Now it's a little bit of a questionable thing. I don't know if Vibram manufactures the midsole back here or not, um, but um, the rubber is by Vibram, for example. But these are designed to fit exact and they end up being glued on. They'll have a little toe piece like this one starting to come undone a little bit here already. And they just end up getting glued on. And that's the more common one that everyone tends to see as well. Uh, we have these pair of solos that we ended up resoling. Same exact story that they had 
but we replaced it with a cupped Vibram sole that goes on and then we put a little bit of a sealant around the edges here to kind of secure everything a little bit nicer so it doesn't come undone because again they are glued on usually and after a period of time in those areas where it bends it just comes undone a little bit in the toe area too it's inevitable it could be touched up it can be re-glued it can be completely resold and replaced there are more limitations on it just because like this vibram sole for example does not fit a huge variety of shoes and boots out there but you know with the solo and a lot of the vask boots this sole definitely fits them very well and um you know this is i can never remember that style of vibram we just call it the cupped sole um there it is just to give you that it's the vibram 1375 bifida sole which we've been getting a lot more of these in lately and that's what actually screwed up my hand right here if anybody's wondering it was that bifida sole trying out a new technique now there is also the i guess more sturdy version of a molded sole where it's actually oh, let me put that there where it's actually molded these are a pair of echoes here um can't remember the model on this one I, we used to sell echoes years ago but i can't remember all the style names any, anymore but echo has a few versions there's a lot of other companies that do it, and they tend to do it mostly in the dress shoe lines not so much in the um, work boot tactical outdoor hikers or anything like that for some reason it just tends to be more with the uh, dress shoe styles where these are actually molded so they take the boot upper where when it's already made and it gets placed into a molding pattern and it's injected molded so sometimes you can see a little notch in the back right here maybe you can see maybe not but that tends to be binded almost to this shoe and it's very rare that it comes undone it is still basically almost like gluing a sole on but not quite there so inject molded are definitely your upper hand in the molded family um, but there's very few companies that do that out there and you know if you're getting a hiking shoe or boot or a dress shoe as well with a molded sole definitely great because it's going to be a very durable sole but the problem is again it's going to come unglued or come undone in some form or area mainly in these crease areas here or if you catch your toe it'll come undone it can be glued back together but uh, if you notice that it's starting to separate uh, ask your local cobbler either send them some pictures or to us and we can help you out with that or swing by your local cobbler as well and see if they can at least uh, fix it up or if they can tell you and say you know from this particular style of sole I'd recommend holding off on it until it really starts to open up that way we can get in there clean out all the old glue any gunk or grime otherwise sometimes if it's just just slightly starting to come up somewhere we have to actually pull it back further to sand out the old glues and the dirt and grime that may have gotten in there and and then start re-gluing it so cost wise it may end up being the same whether you waited a little bit or if you got it done at the same time but again never hurts to ask your cobbler will let you know you definitely have to take care of it immediately or you know hold off just a little bit so you're not having to spend double the amount when it's going to continue to come undone a little bit more down the road but anyways that helps cover all all the basics there that kind of wraps it up i have to change the scenery for you give you a layout but uh as i showed you this was for your blake stitch and your adhered ones i forgot to show everybody your goodyear welted it looks very plain from the top here but it's got a little bit of a notch here to be able to stitch it directly to the boot or shoe uh your uh what is it your Norwegian style and split welts are very similar. They're just designed a little bit different. It's not something that a lot of uh, the general public will really see with the welt styles. You'll probably see it with your Blake or adhered on soles where it finally starts to split. You'll probably see at least a portion of it like this here. So just thought I'd show you really quick. But um, again, you know, if you're looking for quality, Goodyear Welted is going to be at your very top. You've got a few different options and varieties out there with Goodyear Welted. Um, you know, your Norwegian Welt, your Split Welt. You've got your uh, traditional um, Goodyear Welt as well. Uh, and then there's a proper term for it, but I can't remember. I always want to call it the Storm Welt, but it's not the Storm Welt. It's 
very different and I just cannot remember off the top of my head. But for you, it's going to be the traditional welt regardless. Norwegian welt and split welt, that's something that you're going to visibly see and be able to identify. With the Blake stitch, you know, there's a lot of different uh, different versions. This, uh, this was your Blake stitch as well. You got that decorative stitching there, like this one right there, but that one's got a stitch. So the welt is literally just decorative. You have different varieties and options on that. Then you've got your adhered and adhered shoes where they're just glued on you've got your molded shoes so that helps you identify at least when you're shopping for shoes what it is you're paying for even if you get a great deal sometimes you can get a awesome deal for um, like these floor shine imperials back when they were made in the u.s uh, that was years ago these are highly prized because they were goodyear welted and they've got the split welt on them i mean i got those uh can't remember but you can end up finding good deals sometimes but at the same time also you got to keep in mind those shoes were broken in also for the person who's wearing them as far as break-in periods go amongst all of these the ones that tend to take a little while to break in are of course going to be your goodyear welted shoes because of the way they're constructed they're a little bit heftier there's more material in there but once they are broken in it's almost like having a custom pair of orthotics or shoes made uh, you, if you've watched some of my other videos you see that we replace the cork inside of Goodyear welted shoe that's majority of the work that we do are Goodyear welted um, and then after that your break in would probably be I would have to say the Blake stitched and adhered ones would be in your next category that take the longest to break in after Goodyear welted just because it's a little more low profile, less material, so the break in process is a little bit quicker. Unfortunately, once it's broken in, it doesn't become custom fitted to your foot. At a certain point, it finally starts to break down and give way, and you know, it needs to be refurbished, in other words. So, you know, you you'll have it fitting perfectly and everything on as far as like the sole or the inside of the footbed where you feel your foot pressing up against everything eventually all the cushions and everything just give out so you know just kind of keep your eye out on it keep an eye on the sole if you get a hole like this one's starting to form the mate to this one had an even larger hole in it uh, at those points well at this point you definitely want to already start getting ready to resole it or if your toes are worn out so just keep an eye on it and then, of course, your um, molded style boots are probably going to be the easiest to break in because those have, or boots and shoes, those have, um, you know, softer materials and everything in there that just tend to conform to the foot. They are designed more of like a performance shoe or boot in most cases, like these Vasques. There's a lot of cushioning all around. The inside is the same way. They're really designed to be more of a functional design and build. So break-in period is very easy, very quick. In some cases, you can end up putting on a boot or shoe and right away immediately wear it all day long, no problems whatsoever, you know, so they're very easy to work with as far as being able to wear them but longevity of them to be able to resole them time and time again that is a whole nother story there's uh there's not much to it some cases they can't even be resold sometimes they end up getting so shredded or fall apart so much cost wise it's not worth it or you know there's just not much material left there because everything kind of fell apart finally all at once um you know some of these like these solos that we resold you know they're worth it you know they're they're a very well built boot but uh you know there was a bit of work that we had to do we were actually planning just to replace the tread on it and leave the midsole once we started cutting off the tread the whole midsole started crumbling and turns out the interior started coming unglued and everything and we ended up having to do the cup sole on that but regardless if i keep babbling up and then also your true molded styles like these echoes most of the time, not a good idea to get them fully resold. Now you can get uh, the heels, of course, redone. We end, uh, most cobblers end up just cutting it down right where that first line is, so try to catch it before the line, and a new top lift is adhered on. That's fairly cost efficient, very easy to do. Um, as far as the sole area here, if you're losing tread and you're just wanting more traction, a protective sole comes in handy very well. But again, resoling this whole thing, if it starts crumbling or has dry rot or something in it, might not be worth it cost wise. So I'd kind of have to leave that up to you and the cobbler that you're working with at that time to decide if it's worth it or not.
some are some aren't Goodyear well to choose if you got them at a good deal uh, somewhere online at a thrift store or they were just given to you as a gift majority of the time I would say they are worth it the only times that I say it's not worth it is when the upper the leather tops start to finally give out where they're having a lot of cracks and you know small creasing like that is normal in leather but when you start having the cracks in there there's not much you can do with that so kind of up to your decision but I usually say you're well to go all out on it go all out you know invest your money into get that material upgraded whether you're wanting a leather JR sole or even just a house grade leather or if you want a day night or Vibram rubber sole on there it's it's a worthy investment it'll just extend that life expectancy and as always definitely condition those uppers please always condition treat them however is needed for the individual type of leather there's a lot of different variants on that you know so get get it going for you if you want your shoes to last you many years if not decades and even generations all right so hopefully this was an informative video i know it's a little bit long but i was trying to cover all the bases there's a lot more fine details in it as well if you have any other questions or comments leave them down below feel free to stop by or give us a call or send us a message i'd be more than happy to help however i can um, and if you have any tips or advice or any other information that you want comment it down below i'll uh do whatever I can to help answer those. And uh, again, stay tuned for our resale video on the uh, Justin Fitzpatrick's boots that we're going to be doing with the day night so I don't have room on the table for them. But stay tuned for that video if you want to check out that process of getting those soles converted from the leather sole with a protective rubber over top of it to a day night sole. And uh, again, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell when you. When that video is up, you'll be notified. And uh, join us on our next uh, Soul Talk Sunday. I've got, uh, I've got a video already in mind for the ladies out there. Ladies, definitely might want to check this one out because it turns out there's not a lot of ladies out there that even know about these things. So, so stay tuned for that one. And um, we'll see you next time then.